Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In today's National Focus, GIS takes a closer look at Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt's bi-weekly press conference, which took place on Friday, April 21, 2023. The press conference featured Minister for Finance, Economic Development, Climate Resilience and Social Security, the Honorable Dr. Irving McIntyre. Among the headline stories, five family bills to be introduced when Parliament convenes on Tuesday. Finance Minister says economic output for Dominica is positive. And Dominica to lead on education reform in the region following symposium on crime. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Island Jazz Collective. And it's time to soak in the amazing voice of Haitian American songstress Felicia Ross. from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, experience the energetic performance of the hip-hop duo Black Violin. Closing the curtains, we take it local. Dominica's youngest and the baddest, the Signal Band. Something stronger than preacher, man, deeper than religion, Visit DominicaFestivals.com for tickets and event information. Circle the date, April 30. It's jazz and Creole in the Nature Island, Dominica. Welcome back. The government of Dominica continues to make strides to improve the lives of all citizens while protecting the country's most vulnerable. As part of that mandate, five new family bills, all aimed at welfare of children, women, and the elderly, are scheduled to be brought before Parliament. Prime Minister, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, says these bills seek to improve the circumstances of the country's vulnerable citizens by offering them greater protection, care, and support under the laws of Dominica. One of these bills aims to eradicate all discriminatory provisions in the law against children born out of wedlock. This falls in line with government's overall mandate of ensuring that every child receives equal opportunity to succeed. The bills include measures to provide for the equal status of children, meaning that all these provisions in the law relating to a child born out of wedlock will be removed. This measure will ensure that all children have equal status under the law, regardless of the marital status of their parents. Importantly, it also addresses matters of succession and inheritance, which means that every child in Dominica, insofar as the treatment by the parents and the treatment and the recognition of the law, the will that every child will be treated equally under the law. A bill relating to child support and maintenance of children will also be brought before Parliament. Prime Minister Skerritt says the law will address numerous matters dealing with obligations of both parents in the support and upkeep of their child. An act for a law relating to maintenance of children will also be introduced to conform with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. The law will seek to improve on the existing provisions related to the obligations of both parents to maintain a child, the specifics of the maintenance order, duration of the order, and method of payment, among other related matters. The issue of child maintenance is always current and a matter of great importance, especially for single parents and children within our communities, who are placed at great disadvantage when one parent shirks his or her responsibility to provide timely and adequate financial support for a minor child. The bill will regularize these situations and provide our children with security and protection. 
government will also introduce a bill for an act relating to main maintenance of spouses and the parents, including the welfare of grandparents. The act makes provision for these two groups in our society who may be left vulnerable and unprotected under the law. It provides for the reasonable maintenance of spouses after cohabitation has ended, meaning after a relationship has ended or dissolved. The Act also addresses the care and support of parents and grandparents who are in need of maintenance by reason of age, physical or mental infirmity or disability. The introduction of bills aimed at increasing protection for victims of domestic violence and adopted children are also on the agenda for the upcoming sitting of Parliament. Prime Minister Skerritt says these bills are necessary as government continues to uphold the rights, responsibilities and protection of all citizens. Against the background of devastating incidents of domestic violence late last year, we will see the introduction of a bill for an act to provide greater protection for victims of domestic violence and for the granting of protection orders to promote their safety. And there's also a bill for an act to provide for the care and protection of children as relates especially to adoption services. These bills are of great significance to our society as they will help us ensure that the rights and responsibilities of family members are protected in any situation and that they are treated fairly and equitably under our laws in Dominica. So there are five separate laws which will be taken to Parliament, all dealing with the welfare and well-being of our citizens. The second meeting of the first session of the 11th Parliament will be held on Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, at the House of Assembly from 10 a.m. Government is committed to continued growth of Dominica's GDP while reducing the country's national debt. Dominica's economy has been severely impacted by recent global crises and national disasters. With the passage of Tropical Storm Erica in 2015 and Hurricane Maria in 2017, which wiped out over 100% of the national GDP, and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, they have all negatively affected the country's economic growth. However, a recent consultation from the International Monetary Fund has projected a growth of over 4% in 2023-2024. Minister for Finance, Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, says growth of 6.9% and 5.7% was recorded in 2021 and 2022, respectively. Growth credited to initiatives taken by government in various sectors such as agriculture and tourism. Dominica's economy grew by an estimated 6.9% in 2021 and 5.7% in 2022. The growth was driven mainly by the construction of climate resilient infrastructure, a substantial rise in agricultural outputs, and a rebound in tourism since the lifting of restrictions related to COVID-19. Secondly, government has been able to implement its public sector investment program and respond to the recent economic shocks because of high CBI revenues. Government's debt is projected to decline slightly to 98.7% at the end of calendar year 2023. Dr. McIntyre says steps are being taken to reduce the national debt by increasing investments in sustainable development areas. The recently approved debt repayment will assist government in achieving that goal. We are taking action to reduce our debt as percentage of GDP, GDP by increasing our investments, particularly in sustainable development enablers and initiatives in order to grow Dominica's GDP. Secondly, limiting additional borrowing. And thirdly, through the recently approved and soon to be established debt repayment fund to accelerate repayment of debts. The fund has also recommended that government continues to implement measures to reduce recurrent expenditure and increase revenues. Some suggestions were made by the fund. However, these were merely suggestions and the cabinet would have to decide on a plan of action. The finance minister added that while Dominica's economic outlook is positive, government is mindful of global issues and the threat that, uh, that natural disasters pose to Dominica. 
Government was commended for its investments and special initiatives to facilitate the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises. Overall, the economic outlook for Dominica looks positive, although we need to remain mindful of the volatile global environment as well as possible impacts of future natural disasters. The fund advised the continued implementation of growth-friendly projects, such as the International Airport and the Geothermal Development Project, while we work to continue to improve government fiscal position and support the vulnerable. By and large, we are satisfied and in broad agreement with the assessment of the fund. Our next step is to review the specific recommendations within the context of our own plans. Most of these will focus on enhancing growth opportunities and measures to improve fiscal and debt sustainability. At a development partners coordination meeting held last month, Prime Minister Scar Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt stated that had it not been for the occurrence of natural disasters and other external shocks, government would have achieved a debt to GDP ratio of below 40%, as he believes that his government has been responsible with its expenditure. Prime Minister Skerritt has described a recent two-day regional symposium on violence as a public health issue, the crime challenge, in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago as timely. The symposium explored the economic perspectives on crime and violence, the economic inequalities as the driver of crime and violence, and the economic cost of crime and violence. Perspectives on education and youth and the juvenile justice reform were also considered. In this regard, Prime Minister Skerritt has advocated the need for education reform. The Prime Minister called for a comprehensive review of the education system in the region during the symposium. There, he also expressed that an urgent evaluation would help to dry up the recruitment for aggressive behavior. To allow for a greater focus on the overall well-being and welfare of our children. I am happy that my proposal found favor with all heads and indeed all participants at the symposium. Traditionally, we have focused heavily on the academic performance of our children without taking into account the diverse backgrounds and social and economic circumstances so that we could better understand their behaviors and cater to their special needs. This narrow focus on academics can lead us to neglect essential life skills, emotional intelligence, social development, all of which are crucial for the development of well-rounded individuals who can positively contribute to our society. I continue to call on all stakeholders, parents, guardians, the clergy, and the business community to take responsibility for the care and support of our children. The matter of curriculum reform is one of the agenda items for consideration and implementation. Prime Minister Skerritt intends to meet with the principals of all government schools in the next two weeks to address the pressing issues within the education system and propose recommendations on the way forward. To discuss my observations and my recommendations on how I believe we can improve the conducive environment for our students to be wholesome children in our society. And I think it is quite fitting and, and at the right time for Dominica to take the lead on this matter. And I intend to certainly take the lead on this matter of education reform across the region. Prime Minister Skerry believes one of the changes should focus on the inclusion of extracurricular activities as the region's school systems are now solely focused on the academic aspect of learning. Meanwhile, CARICOM heads of government have agreed on plans to ban the use of assault weapons on civil, civilian populations. The leaders also made an appeal to the United States for more forceful action against weapon manufacturers and the flow of guns and ammunition into the Caribbean region. The ban would require a mix of legislation and changes in licensing regulations. The leaders also noted the cost associated with the crime epidemic on the region's social, economic and health systems. This bold step reflects our commitment to tackling the root causes of violence and creating a safer environment for people. It also recognizes the need for a collaborative approach, 
with our neighbors to the north to address the movement of these weapons into our countries. I certainly look forward to further dialogue and action on the proposed measures. Dominica will, of course, play its part to introduce the necessary legislation and structures to give effect to the decisions taken. Dr. McIntyre says the whole of society has a responsibility to care for the mentally ill and it's not solely to be placed at the feet of the government. The minister says while government has a role to play in providing the social safety nets, families also have a duty to provide care for these individuals. The family has to play part, the clergy, the church has to play part. So it's, it's an all-in society approach to this. But granted, yes, the state has to provide the services and this is part of what we are actually doing now. This is actually why we have actually approved a location for the welfare department that has been done recently. As a matter of fact, that was done two days ago. And um, apart from, you no, know, if, if location was the issue that we've dealt with, and um, so that was done as well. The minister says mental health is an integral part of primary health care and says the economic and social impact of inflation and other social pressures have also affected the individuals and compounded, compounded the situation. If you look at the economics of the whole situation, you look, people have been under tremendous stress from the time from um, COVID-19 onwards, and this has gone on all through the war in Ukraine. We've seen what infl and, um, inflation has done. We've seen how the increased tariffs has re resulted in all the increase in prices. We've seen how inflation has affected us tremendously. Then we've seen the social impacts. So let alone the economic impacts, we've seen the social impacts. And all these things ultimately lead to a lot of stress on individuals. The minister insists there needs to be a more caring society as mental health issues cannot be left solely to government. We're coming with all these domestic violence bills. So all these are different things that we're putting in place that we can address that present situation. Granted a home for those places. So that is why we have the children who abuse. That's why we have the home at Chances. That's in Jimmy down there. They provide for the children and the underage children who have been abused, those from vulnerable homes, and they have a place for those people. As to you talking about maybe the group above this, maybe from 14 going up to 18, because you don't want to keep them into the Dominica State Prison and you don't keep them in a place that is suitable for them apart from the Dominica State Prison and apart from chances. So that little window or that group there, we are working into this as well. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Visit DominicaFestivals.com for tickets and event information. Circle the date, April 30. It's jazz and Creole in the Nature Island, Dominica. Welcome back. Government remains committed to the passage of the necessary legislation in Parliament to modernize Dominica's electoral system. During the swearing-in ceremony of Prime Minister Skerritt last year, he announced the prioritization of electoral reform. Government engaged Sir Dennis Byron in 2020 to advance efforts towards electoral reform. While developments have been made towards the process, Prime Minister Skerritt expressed his dissatisfaction with the setbacks of the final set of proposals due to the post-COVID post challenges confronting the island. I will say to you that I'm very disappointed that as of April 21, 2023, I have not received the final set of proposals to advance to the public and ultimately the Parliament of Dominica. This is by no means a criticism of the efforts of Sir Dennis Byron, but more of a commentary on the challenges besetting us in a post-COVID environment and the backdrop of, a, of the tremendous consultations and research that go into the preparation of the needed report and subsequent recommendations. I share the general view that this is a matter that must be addressed with urgency. Upon receipt of this of the report, we will conduct the necessary consultations in an, an expedited manner as possible uh, with the objective of implementing the recommendations to the satisfaction of the Dominican populace. Prime Minister Skerritt announced during the press briefing that he updated CARICOM heads of government during the two-day regional symposium on Dominica's efforts to modernize the electoral system. And also seeking the further involvement of the CARICOM secretariat in the effort of advancing the electoral reform process in Dominica. 
ideally, I would, you know, I really want to see this thing done with and set aside and we focus our energies and our resources on other equally important issues confronting the Dominican population. And so I do hope very soon we shall receive that final set of recommendations and take it to the Dominican population for consultation and ultimately to the parliament. The modernization of the electoral process will help boost the election integrity, or rather boost election integrity in Dominica. Prime Minister Skerritt believes there must be a greater public awareness of the extent of the services provided at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. With respect to the, the Dominica China Friendship Hospital and the services which are offered at that modern upgraded facility, I believe that the hospital authority and the Ministry of Health, and I've said so before publicly, um, that they need to speak more to the population and to inform the Dominican population on the services which are being offered at the Dominican China Friendship Hospital. I believe that the average Dominican is not sufficiently aware of the extent of the services, especially new services that have been offered at the Dominican China Friendship Hospital. The Prime Minister was asked about Dominicans who, in spite of the new hospital services, have had to travel abroad for care. He made it clear that uh, Dominica has never had the quality of care that the new Dominica China Friendship Hospital is able to provide currently. He believes hospital authorities need to do more promotion of, those, of the hospital's available capabilities and services. They need to provide you, for example, the number of people who have been subjected to care, utilizing the HIFU machine, for example. The statistics on that. And how many of these people ordinarily would have required to travel for medical care. They need to give us, for example, how many people have been subjected to investigations by the MRI, for example, who, who would have to have traveled to uh, Antigua in particular um, and beyond in Barbados to, to seek um, those interventions. The eye care facility. Um, we have, I've been told, and Dr. Ricketts indicated so when they were commissioning the facility, that we have the most modern and advanced eye care clinic in the OECS. Um, and how many people would have been required to go out to Dominica to access those facilities? On the issue of uh, surgeries, the Prime Minister noted that the new hospital cap hospital's capacity has been significantly increased. We have more um, um, theatres than previously um, we had under the Princess Margaret Hospital. And how many people have been, have been um, provided with um, interventions um, by this facility. The oncology department, um, how many people would have traveled to Dominica prior to the um, construction of the Dominica China Friendship Hospital for oncological, uh, oncology um, investigations and care and treatment. The, cardio, um, the cardiology department, with the presence of, of Dr. Andrew, the presence of our Chinese um, medical um, cardiologist expert, how many people would have traveled to other countries um, to seek um, investigations in matters relating to their, their um, 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 cardiology, etc., etc. The Prime Minister believes the new Dominica Friendship Hospital is more advanced now than it was prior to its construction, and more needs to be done to inform the public of the services offered. Obviously, um, there are people who, um, who um, choose sometimes to go overseas for medical care. It is not because they are being referred to by a specialist but they choose to go um, for one reason or the other. Um, and I have seen where doctors have said to certain patients that we can treat you normally, but the person decides I want to go overseas. Um, my daughter is in Guadeloupe, or my, my uncle is in the United States, and I want to go and get medical care. Not because it can't be provided here, but people um, decide to go overseas, um, uh, and, and so forth. And when they come back, they have to be treated here in Dominica. Um, after having spent tens of thousands of U.S. dollars to get medical treatment. So I think there has to be uh, 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 an appreciation for, for the facts and for the circumstances and, and where we are with regards to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the evolution, or indeed the revolution, and the provision of health care in Dominica. The growing presence of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, continue to challenge the health security of Dominica. 
According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDs such as heart disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease, and diabetes are the leading causes of death worldwide and represents an emerging global health threat. Deaths from NCDs now exceed all communicable disease deaths combined. Early in March, Dominica joined the world in observance of World Kidney Day, where it was announced that hypertension was the most predominant non-communicable disease on the island, with near 30% or 30 patients, I should say, undergoing dialysis treatment. Prime Minister Skerritt has emphasized the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle and called on citizens to join him in advocating against NCDs. It appears that I am almost a lone ranger who is advocating in respect to CNCDs in Dominica. And to be honest with you, I feel a sense of emotion and sadness about this because I don't believe that the population understands and appreciates the impact on the society and on families, the prevalence of CNCDs in Dominica. You understand? When you have a 40-year-old having a leg amputated and she has four children, single parent, what do you think is going to happen to this family? Prime Minister Skerritt believes that educating the public on non-communicable diseases will help prevent the need for cost treatment as many would be made aware of the risks associated with an unhealthy lifestyle. Every year the cost increases. When we could cut this cost by half if we provide more education, more advocacy, more information to the general public on how we can manage our well-being and our health. And people like to talk about roads and this thing. I'm saying to us in this country that this thing is serious. There are too many men who are 40 years or older who have never seen a doctor in enough 60 years. And then by the time you go to the doctor, you can't get treated for prostate anymore because it's too advanced. Government has prioritized health care for all through its many efforts to improve health delivery and emergency care, or rather emergency care management, with investments in infrastructure and personnel across the island. Prime Minister Skerritt has placed emphasis on the need for citizens to take ownership of their health. So this is why we encourage people to exercise and to, and to eat, eat properly. It is a serious, serious, serious threat to this country. And the media has a role to play on this. You know, all of us, we should not... Showing empathy and showing genuine care should not be only when it affects our families that we speak about these things. It has to be about your concern for somebody else. And this is from the vantage point which I speak. Is a very serious issue in this country, and I am pleading, literally pleading, and beseeching the population to join me, please, in this fight. The fight against NCDs requires a joint effort. Prime Minister Skerritt implores the public to take action as prevention is better than cure. It's a fight for survival, it's a fight to protect our economy, it's a fight to protect the citizens of this country from this scourge called CNCDs and, and failure to act in a proactive and preemptive manner. Um, I, I'm, I'm sad to say that it may be, we will run the risk of being in a situation where we'll say it's too late. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.